Welcome back. Trying to trying to get back into the swing of things here. Now that I'm home, get back into my routine. And uh, I should have a pretty good reason to very soon because Gen 4 is right around the corner. And this video is about the latest update. It was released a couple days ago on Android. Still isn't out on iOS yet, but let's talk about it. Let's, let's talk about what the Silk Road found in their APK mine. <clears throat> Still kind of getting over that uh, post-travel sickness. I don't know why that always happens. Anyway, this update is version 0.123.1. Again, it started rolling out for Android. It's not on the iOS app store just yet, but it includes pretty much everything that we need. Starting with uh, AR Plus is coming to Android or is available now on Android if you have this update for a select group of Android phones. So if you go to the, uh, if you go to the Play Store on your Android phone and you can download AR Core, then your phone should potentially support it, but it doesn't support every phone that can use AR Core. So maybe most like the newest high-end Android phones can probably use AR Plus now. I guess I could do a demo with my uh, Galaxy Note 8, but you've seen what AR Plus looks like, right? Do I need to do it? Aside from AR Plus for Android, not much is new on the front end of this update. You can now select multiple Pokemon for battle parties, meaning you don't have to select one at a time. You can, you know, select multiple at a time. And there have also been a few changes to the way that the interaction radius works. So we've known for a long time that players in higher latitudes can interact with things that are well beyond their actual radius. And then players closer to the equator have to actually move closer. And even if something's inside the circle, you might not be able to interact with it. That should be sort of fixed, not necessarily entirely fixed, but maybe adjusted a little bit. So if you're high up north, uh, let us know how that's going. If you're near the equator, let us know if anything's changed. Who's us? But now, the biggest, the biggest change, the biggest update, the biggest thing that is hiding inside this update for Pokemon Go is every Gen 4 Pokemon. They're all there. All 107 Gen 4 Pokemon and all their forms have been added to the game data and should be ready to go as soon as the update hits for iOS, meaning sometime this week, as early as this week, we could see Gen 4 in Pokemon Go. So keep an eye out uh, as soon as the update goes live on iOS, as soon as the update becomes forced, it's Gen 4 time. There are a lot of Pokemon to go over for Gen 4. A lot of them will be relevant. I've talked about a few of them in the past, all the evolutions of current Pokemon that we're gonna see added with Gen 4. So I won't go into too much depth now because, again, we don't know what moves they're going to have. We don't know any of that information just yet. Uh, but once Gen 4 officially launches, then we'll start talking about which Pokemon are going to have the most impact. Not only that, but things are going to change. We know that Niantic is working on or has already said that there will be changes to CP, changes to HP and defense and the whole formula. So Pokemon stats are going to change and it remains to be seen how that is also going to affect the metagame. So no use talking about which Pokemon are going to be the best in the current system because the current system is going to change before Gen 4 launches. Again, that's another hint that Gen 4 is coming. So once you see those CP changes, we'll know that Gen 4 will be following shortly after. Along with the new Pokemon, 17 new moves were added. Skull Bash, Acid Spray, Earth Power, Crab Hammer, Lunge, Crush Claw, Octazooka, Mirror Shot, Super Power, Fell Stinger, Leaf Tornado, Leech Life, Drain Punch, Shadow Bone, Muddy Water, Blaze Kick, and Razor Shell. Interestingly, a lot of those are sort of signature moves for Pokemon. Uh, Crab Hammer is a signature move of Kingler. Uh, also applies to Crawdunt once Gen 3 was added. Octazooka, that's Octillery's signature move. Razor Shell is, I thought, a Gen 5 move. Yes, Razor Shell is a Gen 5 move. It's a signature move of one of the Gen 5 starters, so I don't know why that's being added right now. Blaze Kick is Blaziken's signature move, but also applies to Infernape, which is one of the Gen 4 starters. So, we should see some new moves, uh, move updates for Pokemon that are already in the game. Again, changing the metagame. And speaking of moves, there is a change that hints 
at the future of the battle system. Previously, moves were listed in uh, the game data as ability one and ability two. Not ability as in abilities, like the abilities that we want in the battle system, but ability refers to moves. So they were specifically listed as ability one and ability two. Each Pokemon has two moves. It's been updated now. With this latest update, they are no longer numbered one and two. They're now just called ability. Ability title text, ability power text, ability type icon, hinting that maybe there is not a limit on moves, or there's probably a limit, but it's not two. In the future, or in this battle system update, hopefully, maybe, this is a hint at it here, but Pokemon could be able to learn more than just two moves, which is a big change, and a welcome change, and I hope it's an actual change, and that we're not just reading too much into this, but why rename it from one and two to just ability? I think we're gonna see more than two moves very soon. The changes to stats, to HP, to defense are probably part of a bigger battle system rework ahead of PvP. We know that that's coming later this year, potentially later this year, maybe. Uh, ideally later this year, but who knows, it could be delayed. But I feel like this change from ability one and ability two to just ability is another hint at bigger changes coming to the battle system very soon. And then finally, Meltan. You know Meltan, right? Meltan's cry and potential evolution were sort of added to the game. S sort of. There's just more hints at Meltan being included. And speaking of Meltan, we got a ton of new information about it, so let me just pull all that up. We saw Meltan uh, after Chikorita Community Day, and it was actually just Ditto. Disguised as Meltan, then we learned more about Meltan. We know that Meltan is a mythical Pokemon, it's a Steel-type Pokemon, but now, we know even more, including how to get Meltan. The actual, like, the real Meltan, not Ditto, disguised as Meltan. From the official Pokemon website, in order to catch Meltan, it's essential to have a mystery box, which can be obtained by sending Pokemon from Pokemon Go to Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee. So when you transfer Pokemon from Pokemon Go to Let's Go, I'm pointing at my Switch over there, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, you'll get a mystery box in Pokemon Go. When you open the mystery box in Pokemon Go, for 30 minutes, Meltan will be appearing. The actual real Meltan, not Ditto disguised as Meltan. So yes, currently the only way that we know to get Meltan in Pokemon Go is to have Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee and to send Pokemon over to it. Of course, you'll still be able to, well actually maybe not because it's mythical. You might not be able to trade for a Meltan. So if you want Meltan, you might have to get Let's Go Pikachu or let's go Eevee. But you might also just be able to send Pokemon to a friend's copy of the game, so you might not necessarily need to buy it yourself. I'm not sure exactly if that's gonna be possible, but we'll see. And then once you catch Meltan in Pokemon Go, after opening the mystery box, you can then transfer Meltan to Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee. And something is gonna happen with multiple Meltan, because in the end, the very end of this teaser video, it looks like Meltan has either a new form or an evolution. So it seems like having multiple Meltan and transferring them to Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, or maybe even just within Pokemon Go, having multiple Meltan will somehow unlock or trigger uh, an event, an evolution, maybe, and we could see Mega Meltan? Mel Meltan 2? B Big Boy Meltan? I don't know. It looks like an evolution to me. Oh, uh, yeah, I, uh, blah, blah. There's a Gen 4. There's a Sinnoh tab in the Pokedex now. That's another thing that's in there, because I know someone's going to comment saying that I missed it. I didn't miss it. Also, if you want to read the full APK mine, including all the, like, you know, back-end networking, anti-cheat, the, 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 the nerdy stuff. Sorry, Dromps. The nerdy stuff. If you want to read all that, Linked in the description, the Silk Road's APK mine, as always. Uh, but for now, Gen 4, it's just about here. We could be seeing it as soon as this week. Uh, keep an eye out for when the update goes live on iOS. That's a good hint. When the update gets forced, that's a huge hint. Uh, as soon as we see CP changes and updates, another good hint. Gen 4 is coming very soon. kind of feel like playing a Gen 4 main series game. I know I never finished Emerald, but... If anyone's interested in seeing a Gen 4 livestream, 
main series game live stream. Let me know. Thinking about it. My throat kind of hurts just talking for this long, so maybe not, but Gen 4 is coming. I'm coming back. Okay, I'm gonna go eat breakfast. See you soon.